scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. A disciple is one who is taught methodically, line upon line, precept upon precept. If we allow believers to randomly fish out their ideas about God and the faith life, we are going to end up with casualties. Unfortunately, this is the problem even in many campuses now. We have several campuses and several individuals whose ideas about God have not been vetted from the integrity of scripture and the presence of methodical mentorship. So we have people coming up with all kinds of pseudo-Christian ideas. They may not be insincere. They are just people who did not follow the pattern prescribed. Jeremiah 6, 16 says to stand in the way and to watch, to look for that ancient path. Where is the good way? He says, and to walk therein and then you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to begin a discussion with us that I think will bless us. Let me title this teaching, The Journey of Faith. The journey of faith. We are going to explore how God works with men. The, the key to an excelling life. The key to excellence in your spiritual adventure. Romans chapter 5 and verse 14. I begin my teaching now. Romans 5 14. The Bible tells us. Romans 5, 4, are we there? My apologies, Romans 15, Romans 15. I was trying to pull up my notes. Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. Let's read it together if you see it projected. Ready? Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, so that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. Please look up. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime. In other words, history is a teacher. Are we together? That the things that are written aforetime, anything that is captured through history is supposed to be a template. It is for our learning. That means the way we move forward is by looking to history. Are we together now? The things that are written are for time. They are written for our learning. That from the knowledge that is gained through history, we can have the confidence to know that if God did it before, he can do it again. If God used people before, he can use people again. If God shook you I before, he can do it again. The things that were written 25 years ago, all the stories you are hearing now, it is not just a communication of the yesteryears of people. It says they are written for our learning. That means if you only hear history and you don't learn, you did not benefit from it. The things written aforetime, they are written for our learning. 
Hallelujah. Next scripture, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. We are examining ancient spiritual patterns that can help us to excel in our faith adventure. Here's what the Bible says. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them. There are some them that are worthy of followership. It says followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. To not be slothful, but that in your quest to obtain the promise, in your quest to carry out an excelling faith adventure, he says to search for them. There are some them who are worthy of double honor, who have been used by God and they have left marks in the sands of time. He says to follow them. One of the ways we learn the dealings of God is by following men who have worked with God. Are we together? The Bible archives in Hebrews chapter 11, these men, and he calls them elders. And the testimony about them is that they obtained a good report. It says, now faith is, 11 verse 1 Hebrews, the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He says, by it, this faith, the elders obtained a good report. Then he begins to unravel the story of these elders one by one. By faith, Abel offered a worthy sacrifice. By faith, this one and that one. And then he says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. And the Bible says, without us, they will not be complete. That means we are still on our way to, to obtaining that status of an elder by following their path until we obtain a good report. Is someone learning? He says, all this having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. We are the ones who will complete that equation. There is still a space in destiny allowing you to come that at the end of your life when we list the elders who obtain a good report your name will be added to that the next 25 years if christ tarries and you gather here it will be you laughing now hugging one another and say we remember during the last 25 years anniversary i listened to a sermon and i took that step look the ministry that came out of that sermon look the business that came out of that sermon is someone learning? So the Bible says, history can teach us. The things written are for time, they are for our learning. I wrote here and I may want you to write it too. The Bible is full of men and women whose entire faith journey was captured from childhood even till their seasons of exploits. That the Bible is full of men and women isn't it amazing that in many regards you will find in scripture the lives of individuals who, whose entire lifetime was captured in the Bible. There are a few you will just find moments of their lives. But the Bible was careful to meticulously follow through the life of certain people from childhood until they got to the zenith of their exploits and even up to their transition. I wondered for many years why the Bible and God in his character would meticulously. It was like following the entire lifetime of a man from birth till transition. Until I found the scripture that the things written are for time. That means God literally took a zoom into a man's entire lifetime to capture moments that are rich with truth. That if you can follow it's like a compass, a spiritual compass that will lead you to the place of destiny with exactitude. Are we together? The Bible is full of men and women whose entire faith journey was captured from their childhood even till their seasons of exploits and many others onto their moments of transition. For instance, Moses... For instance, Joseph. For instance, Samuel. For instance, David. For instance, Esther. And even Jesus Christ. 
the bible starts their story from childhood in fact for jesus he was so meticulous he started even with his parents why would the bible be so meticulous you would think he would just zoom the most important aspect just tell us he died he rose up three days he is called savior if you believe go to heaven if you don't go to hell and it stops there and yet the bible even captures census it was as a time when census what do i do with the census it was that he wants you to see the conditions upon which that life and that destiny came so that you are without excuse are we together for many years i wondered why the bible would capture many details that i thought was unnecessary this begat this and when this happened at that time there was no this there was no manger there was it was at a time of i'm like oh come on please go straight to the point now i know that the things that were written are four times every detail captured reveals something that if god opens your eyes you will see that if a man could thrive in this kind of economy condition political condition jesus was born at the time when the roman government had dominion they were the powers of the then world that means you do not have any excuse to not serve god there were people who were born during slavery children were killed for instance the life of moses because he knew that you will easily find an excuse that will excuse that will stop you from rising and you say my situation is because i come from ibadan or i come from this or my father and my mother died there, there is a story around my family that i don't understand and then he will refer you to someone in the bible to say he went through the same thing and he still conquered it they are still suspecting whether my father is my real father or not that's exactly what happened to jesus so you don't have any excuse i don't even have any friend during my time something happened all my siblings died i came from a family where all my brothers hated me as joseph all of these were captured so that no one is without excuse please listen very carefully the things that are written are four times they are for our learning are we together there are a few people like abraham where the bible just tells us straight to the point from the time they were already adults we don't have the privilege to really know so much about their upbringing it just tells us in summary Terah was his father and then Abraham. There are a number of people like that. But tonight, I'm interested in the ones that the Bible took the time to tell us about their birth, the circumstances around their birth, meticulously showing us how they grew. Are we blessed? One of such people that will be worthy of our study very briefly tonight is the man Moses Moses had the destiny of a deliverer but then we see that Moses had a very disturbing childhood there are many others that will touch but Moses was a very interesting personality if you have the bad circumstances of Moses you should have a justification to live a useless life. A child who was born and then thrown in a basket by the mother. What kind of upbringing or what kind of birth experience is more humiliating than that? Do you know what it meant for the mother to just keep him in a basket and then in a river and say, Lord, this, is, this one came from you, I hand him over to you. And then, that is the end of, imagine as an adult, someone walks up to you and says, God wants to use you. But let me tell you a little story about how you were born. One day, there was a river somewhere around Ibadan. We just saw a basket that looked like a bomb. And we opened it and found you inside. You will first want to find out who your parents are. And go and meet them and say, so this is, this is. And then Moses is found and taken to Egypt. And Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh because Pharaoh's daughter loved him so much. And yet Moses would get to a point where the cry of destiny 
began to ring in his heart do you know the life of Moses is very interesting because even if he didn't serve God from an earth standpoint he still would have been a success he still subjected himself to the principles that will make any man succeed under Egypt he would have been properly mentored the only thing is that he would not serve destiny from a kingdom standpoint he was going to be the next Pharaoh and one thing led to the other killed an Egyptian and he decided to take that risk with his destiny and run away was at the backside of the mountain for 40 years you know what it meant for Moses to give up the royalty and the honor that status in Egypt and then one time an encounter came to his life and shifted him to another dimension to cut the long story short that young boy who was pushed in that basket had the destiny of delivering the people oh my god who knows that someone who is sitting here right now regardless i don't care the story around your life only god knows what has been written he said lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written as it is written please sit down I want you to please pay attention there are three seasons as far as your faith adventure and the adventure of destiny fulfillment is concerned there are three major seasons that must be captured in your life let me just let me just jump there for the sake of time there are three major seasons in your journey of faith in your faith adventure as far as fulfilling the purposes of God for your life is concerned there are three major seasons that I want you to learn listen if you miss any of this season except by the mercy of God you can be sure you will abort destiny are you ready the first phase and the first season of any man's life is called the season of preparation the season of preparation there is nobody who becomes mighty by default there is nobody who becomes mighty just by wishing you must pass through the first path and the first season that befalls all men whether you utilize it or not and you see all the seasons of a man's life are time dependent that means for any time you waste time you are wasting the unit of destiny listen very carefully the season of preparation there are five things that God expects to happen to you within this season and if those five things do not happen in that season it cannot qualify you for your next season is someone learning already the season of preparation you want to be great you want to be mighty through God you want to do much for the kingdom within your lifetime pay attention to your season of preparation there are five things that must happen to you within this season number one very quickly you must discover God your season of preparation is your moment of encounter listen most people today want to live a great life and all they are looking for is the name of the ministry this is not how we started the protocol of greatness is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God everybody say it in the beginning not fame in the beginning not a name in the beginning not power in the beginning not rema if you violate this protocol you are going to destroy your life there is no great man who started with the desire to be great in the beginning god this is the first message that must be restored especially to the generation coming for many in the beginning power for many in the beginning titles for many in the beginning platform and the name of ministry for many in the beginning CAC registration when we started with God it was a blind 
passion for the things of God. We did not even know ourselves. Some of us came from families where by, by, by our biological whatever it is, we did not even know that we had much. Your season of preparation is the time to press into God. You heard what they were saying here. Passion for God. How does a student come into class and then puts his ego down and stands before people and talks about Jesus very boldly? In the beginning, God. In your season of preparation, that is the time where you discover God. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says, but the people that do know they are God. Your season of preparation is the season where God must move from being your pastor's God to being your God. He must move from being your mentor's God to your God. It's the season of a personal revelation. Thank God for the leverage of what somebody told you about God. But you have to now know him. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, he will ask you who sent you. Pharaoh is not just, you can't bring a rod and stand before Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, God sent me. Say, which one? And you'll be surprised that you yourself, you say, I don't know, are there many? I never knew there were many. There are many people today who have started ministries, respectfully speaking, who have started all kinds of things. And then when the attacks and the vicissitudes of life confront them, that is Pharaoh saying, who sent you? They stand in shock and in frustration. I didn't answer that question before I started. But the people who know they are God. You are my God. You are my God. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. Ah. For you are my God. You are my God. Listen, can I tell you? I wish I can tell you, you will not stand before mountains and valleys in your life as anybody who has been mightily used by God. We do not know the mountains and the valleys that stand before you from where you are to where you need to go. Your confidence is not any signature, any uncle signs for you. It is the God that you know. How will your bills come? The God that you know. How will the members come? The God that you know. How will you survive your name being taken to shrines? The God that you know. How are you sure that the naysayers against your life will... Ah! He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my eyes. He says, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen very carefully. God is speaking to you tonight. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. Because you were my God. Shalabaka sobrande gelakatosia. You were my God. Can I tell you, every great man you see today, nobody gave them any guarantee. Don't you think somebody said, Come, I will give you land? Don't you think somebody said, Come, I will give you members? We live in a generation of people who do not know God. Clamoring for guarantees. Can
can you stand by me as I start ministry? There are people who enter the campus carrying only one box. Where their school fees of the next session will come from, they did not know. Blind faith, obedience. Please listen very carefully. Some of you, God is shaking away this auxiliary scientific faith that does not produce results. Please sit down. I think you should work on something, maybe media. Something is playing in the background. So season of preparation number one, you discover God. Let me tell you this. When you start your journey, and this is the advantage of the campus, aside from the privilege to learn, the campus is a platform that gives you the liberty to know God. There are many families because of their biases as to certain aspects of the kingdom. They may not give you the liberty to worship and pray and do night vigil. So God uses the disguise of your academic pursuit and plants you in an atmosphere that gives you the privilege you may never get at home. There are many people who will not be here if they were in their homes. The parents will not agree. Some by five o'clock, six, no matter how old you are, once you are under that covering, you must be home. So he gave you admission. Even though you were not qualified, you still don't know why the admission still came. It is a time to know God. Unfortunately, the devil too is waiting for you at the gate of the campus. As soon as you arrive, he would distract you with all kinds of things. Can I tell you, ask any, most of the people you celebrate today, their, their season of preparation started, they utilized their moments on campus. There is no great man who God used mightily that had the privilege of passing through a campus who cannot show you their places of prayer, their points of prayer, their points of fasting. Parakatosiata. Moments where you prayed, moments where you fasted, no money but you fasted, or you carried everything and gave it away, and it will look as if you are irresponsible. Let me tell you the truth our love for God was vetted by the purity of our pursuit. When I started working with God, I never knew that they used to give a man of God honorarium that you preach and you count 10 naira. Believe me when I tell you, to know that you preach and you actually put an envelope, I probably will run away. Knowing God vets the purity, it, it, it reaffirms the purity of your desire. Because if God does not do that hard check, let me tell you, by the time the glamour of success comes, you will not last. Is the reason why many today, their first car, is the window that leads them to perdition. Their first international ministry is what dries up their prayer life because they did not stay with God to love Him and to know Him above all things. Times where others sleep is why others are awake. Lord, my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua Ah, 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 
most of our visions and prophetic encounters started in the place of prayer not in the place of looking for power genuine search for God that's how we started receiving songs from the spirit genuine search for God help them please genuine power forged by the fires of his presence no TV no radio no nothing no phones but God in the beginning God for someone God is saying I'm still waiting for you where you left me you started with me but your first invitation they gave you an opportunity and you left me and you believe you are doing ministry he said in the year that king Uzziah died something must die for you to see God your pride must die your ambition must die when you come to him he takes away that which is alive in you and he becomes your only life in the year king Uzziah died I saw the Lord in the year my pride died in the year my lust died in the year flesh died i saw the lord so the first in your season of preparation god gives you time there is a time frame to pursue god and to seek him sincerely and let me tell you the truth you cannot do all the socialization you want to do and find God. I'm sorry, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. In economics, there's something called opportunity cost. Is that true? You have to make quality choices. You have to discover the God of heaven. Lord, so this is how you are. And let me tell you this. The seed for finding God is time you will never truly encounter the God of the Bible if you cannot sow the seed of time don't give God five minutes two verses ten minutes prayer I want to have an encounter of someone who has dedicated himself literally become the sacrifice on the altar God is not unjust my dear people and let me tell you the truth the bankruptcy of the genuineness of your encounter will tell later in ministry. It's true. It's the reason why today there are people who are weak, very, very weak. They did not build capacity. Can I tell you this? On campus, you most likely don't have children. You most likely are not married. You most likely may not be the person shouldering your finances. That time you have, you will not have it again. There are today, ask any man of God to set aside time for God is a luxury. You have to you have to go the extra mile to create certain things. He said, Eat for the journey is far. For someone, this is a word for you. Instead of running around trying to announce yourself and say, You've not invited me. Thank God that nobody knows you yet. And stop wasting your time trying to make everybody know you that is not the key to ministry just because you have advantage of internet and YouTube you can shout your name and be surprised if God does not say hear ye him you will waste your time you see this generation needs help we need to redefine our priorities because we are used to celebrity living all I need to do is just conjure something let people just know I'm there and that's it when the devil finds out that you are determined to destroy yourself, he will be the one to open the door for you. Because it is knowing God that will help you to know which door is anointed and which door is not anointed, even if it is opened. Let's hurry up because of time. Number two, in the place of preparation, you not only discover God, you discover yourself. Exodus chapter 4. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1. One of the beauties of knowing God is that in finding God, you find yourself. 
man was created in the image and the likeness of God. So the only way to really know yourself and to know your true worth is to know the God that created you. Our world today suffers grossly from identity crisis and it is a direct product of not knowing God. Are we together? It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we have been called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch this. Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the Lord had not appeared unto you are you seeing what he's saying now they will believe you but me the vessel there is a problem with me they are not going to believe me verse 2 and the Lord said unto him what is in your hand and he said a rod will come there shortly verse 3 and he said cast it on the ground he cast it on the ground it became a serpent look at God subjecting subjecting Moses through several experiences verse 4 and the Lord said put your hand and take it by yourself by the tail you know what he was doing to him I'll explain to you shortly it became a rod in his hand verse 5 he says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob had appeared unto thee verse 6 and the Lord said furthermore unto him put now thy hand in thy bosom and he put his hand and when he took it back it was as leprous as snow verse 7 and he said put thy hand into thy bosom again and he put his hand into his bosom he plucked it out and behold it turned like his flesh now verse 8 and it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the letter sign now follow carefully verse 9 and it shall come to pass if they will not believe these two signs neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take water out of the river pour it upon dry land and the water which thou hast taken shall become blood we're reading to verse 12 there about I want to point out something for you and Moses said unto the Lord watch this now look at all the things God was doing to Moses remember God was saying Moses you do it participate in that process of the supernatural so that you will believe in yourself I want to do something with you so that that doubt and fear you have will dry up in his presence and Moses is still complaining oh my Lord I am not eloquent it is only when you know him that he will know you. Because if you don't know what God has made out of you, the devil will tell you many things about you. You mean it's you that God is going to send out of this family? You mean God does not have any other preacher that will come and carry you? But in the place of knowing God, he will reveal something to you about yourself that will give you confidence regardless. Moses said, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and is on, on of a slow tongue. Can you imagine this? So imagine Moses' mindset about himself. God is saying, I want to use you, and he's bringing everything. Oh, this you see God you want to send me I am not this I am not that I am not this verse 11 and the Lord said unto him who had made man's mouth in other words listen listen your looking down on yourself is a mockery to my artistry and creativity I took time to create you and every time you look at yourself and say God you didn't try enough if only you added this to me I can be a better preacher Do you know what this means if Moses had been patient with God to believe everything God was telling him he would not need somebody to help be his mouthpiece I believe by this God had plans to heal him and correct him but Moses said well I believe this about you but this limitation and he said fine since you do not believe I can solve this I will bring somebody to remedy it who had made man's mouth or who make it the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind have not I the Lord the Lord was challenging him verse 12 give us verse 12 now therefore 
go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Listen, when you encounter God, the next thing that happens is that you must discover yourself. Who am I? What did God make out of my life? Let me tell you who you are. John 1, 6. These are the realities that you must find in your faith adventure. John 1, verse 6. Please help us, media. There was a man sent from God. Everybody, please shout this. Say, sent from God. One more time. Now mention your name and say, sent from God. One more time. Let the devil hear it. Joshua Selman, sent from God. Not a Yoruba person. Not an Igbo person. Not a Hausa person. That only defines the geography of your arrival. But he says there was a man. I am a man. But that's not all about me. I was sent from God. It matters where I came from because he that cometh from above is above all. That means knowing that I was sent from God already gives me the courage to know that every mountain that stands before me, I know that I saw my, my origin is an advantage. Are we learning now? Listen, let me tell you the truth. We live in a world today that can bully you psychologically. You will find yourself in the midst of people who may think they are richer than you, wiser than you, better than you. As a man of God, if you don't know who you are, you cannot be a good pastor. Insecurity will make you destroy your people. You will see people wealthier than you, smarter than you. You must be able to celebrate them without feeling intimidated because you have discovered that if not for anything as an advantage in your life, you are sent from God. Someone prophesied, say sent from God. Apostle, you don't know my CGPA. I sympathize with you and we pray that it will rise. But in the interim, no matter what goes wrong, never forget this. Sent from God. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? There is abundance that follows being sent. Not just abundance of money, abundance of grace. And God is able to make all grace So do not laugh at what I do not seem to have now. Remember, I am sent. Ah, carry that mentality. I am sent. I have only two members, but I am still sent. I know that I don't have a job yet. Ten years as a graduate, but I am sent. Listen, this is very simple. But this is how God delivered some of us from all kinds of complexes, regional complexes, whatever kinds of complexes. When he met Gideon in Judges chapter 5 and 6, he met a young man who had the destiny of a warrior and a deliverer, but he was hiding. And he said, oh, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon said, don't flatter me. I know where I come from, the least in my father's house and even the last born. Waiting for social media, or waiting for fans or waiting for individuals to tell you who you are is already a disaster on arrival they looked at jesus and called him a murderer they looked at jesus and said you lied that you would destroy the temple but he stood with confidence it is powerful to know who you are they said you are king of the jews and there was no pressure to defend himself some said they said you are this and that the only time he spoke was when pontius pilate said do you know i have the power to set you free said, ah you have gone too far uh -uh. no man can have anything except it is given it is within my power to call a legion of angels my silence is a strategy to regain dominion for the earth not weakness don't confuse my silence for weakness i know who i am can I tell you the truth? 
when you know who you are as a man of God and as a great man you will know when to be silent over needless battles and you may be perceived as weak but you stand as strong because you know who you are if someone looks at you and says is it not your useless father I remember you you come from Ibadan you come from this place I hope you know that your family where you come from people don't rise and last can anything good come out of Nazareth and you don't need to insult them they are speaking their truth but your truth which is the truth according to scripture is that you are a man sent from God regardless the family I came through sent from God the womb of your mother only gave your spirit a body frame but believe me if you stay with God and he convinces you that you are sent from God then he can take you to the nations Jeremiah chapter 1 please and verse 5 am I wasting your time this was the Lord God of heaven speaking to a young boy who would later became, be, become a great mighty prophet but as a little boy he was giving him a little history he said before I formed thee in the belly God knows you but do you know yourself and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Verse 6. Here was the lamentation of an ignorant boy. He said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. Why? For I am a rebuke coming, comes in immediately. Verse 7. The Lord takes the time to rebuke him immediately. He said, Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am a Nigerian. Say not, I am weak. Say not, I am a female. Say not, I am disadvantaged. Say not, I can't speak English very well. Say not, I am last born. Say not, I am an offer. If you really want to know who you are, there are some say nots. You must know what to say and you must know what to not say. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. Because in this kingdom, whatever you declare, whatever you name, that is what it becomes. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Are we together? God never called the people grasshoppers. Satan never called the people grasshoppers. They called themselves they say we were like grasshoppers. Sent from God. Let's rush to number three very quickly. We're still in the season of preparation. Oh, five things. Number one, you must discover God. Number two, you must discover yourself. Number three, for sake of time, you must discover your giftings and abilities. This one, this is one of the advantages of the pursuit of God in the place of preparation. Especially through service. Service in the house of God. Many people on campus did not even know they were going to be ministers. It was as they served. They discovered, so I can sing. Okay, there's an opportunity to go to the worship team. From there, some of them today are leading nations in worship. You must discover your giftings and potentials because those are the tools that God will use to bless the nations through you. Exodus chapter 4. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll jump to verse 17. Exodus chapter 4. Let's hurry up please. It says, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in your hands? And he said, A rod. Please look up. Do not begin your journey of destiny if you do not know what is in your hands God will never send you unless he reveals to you what you are carrying verse 17 Moses called what was in his hand a rod a gift an ability to sing I can just talk well and people listen to me and when he submitted that rod listen carefully there's no time I would have shown you how the rod is converted from just a rod 
to a rod that does signs and wonders. The first thing Moses did with that rod is that he surrendered that rod before the presence of God. If you cannot lay down your rod to serve God, it cannot become a rod that does signs and wonders. It will remain a rod. There are many people who have the gift of singing, leadership, and it stops there. Nothing supernatural, no, nothing extraordinary. The touch of his presence has not come upon it. Can I tell you, next time you go to worship God, carry everything that is an advantage and worship him too. Don't worship him and your gift stand aside. Carry the gift, let the gift worship him. Let your wisdom worship him. Let your beauty worship him. Everything that is an advantage in your life is that rod that will be used. Verse 17. Thou shalt take this singing ability. Thou shalt take this grace to preach. Thou shalt take this intellectual prowess. Thou shalt take this grace for media. Thou shalt take this ability. Thou shalt take your first class, your two one, whatever it is, wherewith. That means every time there is a need for signs and wonders, don't just be crying up and down. Remember the rod. Every time a generation ignores you, God will say, remember when we were praying and fasting, where is that ability to prophesy that I gave you? Now is the time to bring it out. That is the rod of God in your hand. We are going to pray. I just saw light like eight people. I saw the anointing coming on them now. Please help them. Eight of you. I just saw light coming upon you. Please help them. We we'll have some time to pray, but I need you to get this. In the name of Jesus, that grace, there is a birthing of something within your spirit, man. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Ah, there is a rod of God in your hand. You may look like you are ordinary. You are not just an usher. You are not just a worshiper. You are not just a campus president. You may start serving tables, but there is grace upon you. Please sit down. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Everybody say a rod. Can I tell you? Anybody who tells you he was sent by God, tell him, show me the rod that he gave you. Your rod is what decides your relevance when you stand before Pharaoh. Ah. Moses, what do you have in your hand? an ordinary ability to do good designs what do you have i found out that there's an unusual grace every class i go to i'm a class monitor everywhere i go i am a leader but is it really something do not make the mistake of the wife of the prophet who said i have nothing except everything all refined looks small a rod hear me there are people who are too big to bring their gifts and serve in the house of God. There are many people who began to serve God with sincerity of heart. They never knew they would be preachers. They didn't even know the fellowships would be handed over to them or one day they would become head of this. There are people who learn leadership while they serve. They learned discipline while they served. They became prayer warriors while they served. Some of them were not even born again when they came on campus. But service. Listen, if you have found your rod, it's time to throw that rod before his feet. And to say, rod, you will join me in serving him. I don't know what to do with you, but let his presence give definition. Everything David had, he used it to become a mighty man. His ability to sing, he used it to write songs. His ability as a warrior, he brought victory for Israel. Please don't forget this teaching tonight. There are some of you who are saying, Apostle, God anointed the great people, but there is nothing about me. The only thing about me is that I am beautiful. Ask Esther. Ask Esther how beauty can take someone to a palace 
and give her the leverage to deliver God's people from the wickedness and the plot of her man. Hear me. Everything God has given you. However, it cannot serve the nations if it does not serve God first. The first person the Lord served was not Israel. The first person the Lord served was God. He threw it. God said, if you believe in me, throw that rod at my presence. And Moses, ah, I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Hear me. Let me give you an assignment tonight. When you go back home, go and write down everything that constitutes an advantage in your life. While you are writing it, the devil will be saying, you are joking, write it. If you are beautiful, write it. You are handsome, write it. You are intelligent, write it. An unusual grace to speak, write it. Everything that is an advantage, you are writing your rods. These are the rods that God will use to do mighty things. Leadership ability, write it. You found out there is a prophetic grace within you. Don't let anybody despise you. Refined or not, just write it. You are a prophetic worshiper. Every time you lift up that voice, something happens. Write it down. Hear me, listen. Let me teach you what you are doing. The mystery of what you will be doing is found in Philemon 1 verse 6. It says that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You must acknowledge every good thing. You have acknowledged all the bad things that are in you. That the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. Sit down, let's make progress. So the season of preparation affords you the opportunity to number one, to know God, to discover God. Number two, to know yourself. Number three, to find that rod in your hand, your giftings and your ability. Number four, very quickly, you discover and receive your assignment during these periods of preparation. The assignment that will represent the mandate of your life comes during the period of preparation assignments can be discovered and assignments can be received assignments can be discovered if you are David you may not receive your assignment you may discover it as you are taking food David write it for reference we may not have the time to read as we see in the life of David first Samuel chapter 17 when you read from verse 17 to 52, David was sent to go and give his brothers food because they were in the battleground. That was when he went and he saw this beast roaring. And he said, what is the meaning of this? The nation of Israel were all scared, including King Saul. And he said, listen, I am able to take this guy. They said, who brought this stupid boy to the battlefield now? And he said, no, 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 no. Don't mock me. I have discovered the rod in my hand. While I was in the wilderness, I was not just tending sheep. I, I went to tend sheep, but in tending sheep, I discovered I had the ability to kill anything and listen to me. If you allow me to use my rod. When he used that rod, he brought Goliath down and that began the journey that would end up leading him to become the king of Israel. Can I tell you this? You must trust God for grace to find your place in destiny. Stop saying people don't like me. Nobody is pursuing me. Nobody will look for you for nothing until you find your place. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. 
How about Joseph? If you are Joseph, you will not only discover your call, you will receive it. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 3. Remember the story, the story is 3 to 11. Genesis 37 from 3 to 11. When the young boy went to go and sleep, the Bible says the father gave him a coat of many colors. And then verse 4, let's see how far we can go. That when they saw that the father loved him, they could not speak to him. They started getting angry with him. Five. He said that he dreamed a dream. Everybody say dreamed a dream. Destiny can open up to you in a dream. He dreamed a dream. And when he told his brethren, they hated him the more. Verse six. What was the dream? Let's go to verse seven. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. Can you imagine that? And the brethren said, so you are going to reign over us? Will you have dominion over us? They hated him the more. And you would think that would be the end of it, verse 9. We are reading to 11. He had yet another dream. Be careful when you dream the same thing again destiny is speaking to you I went to bed and I saw myself on a crusade ground healing the sick and doing many things I shrugged it off 200 level that dream has come again that is destiny knocking at your door are we together very important if you are Jeremiah as we saw in chapter 1 of Jeremiah from verse 5 to 12 God will come to you and give you that unique revelation that you have been ordained to be a prophet even unto the nations. Don't forget what we are discussing. The fourth thing that happens during your season of preparation is that you discover or you receive your assignment. Listen, if you graduate from school with only a degree certificate, you did not maximize your stay. You should graduate on one hand with your degree certificate on another hand with a clear blueprint about your destiny now you are a graduate indeed there are many people who hated god while they were on campus and they thought everybody who loved god was a nuisance to civilization some of them till today don't have jobs till today all that they had failed them all that they have is a rod a rod with no presence a rod with no glory I can tell you with all humility, I have seen people today who you would see many years ago and almost think that they will be champions within one year. Can I tell you, if the Lord does not build a house, the laborers labor but in vain. If the Lord does not watch over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. He said it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. It is only God that can give his beloved sleep. hallelujah the pursuit of God should never be seen as a nuisance to any other pursuit no in the beginning God are we together number five your season of preparation what is the final thing that is expected when you are in that season you build capacity and prepare for destiny the fifth thing that you do is you build capacity and prepare for destiny your season of preparation is not a time for manifestation you have an assignment under God to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity let me tell you this I remember Many years ago, I would have a rechargeable, this rechargeable lantern. Most of what we did with our money was to buy food and tapes. That's it. Volumes and volumes. And when, when Pastor Dele was talking about borrowing things, I was just laughing. Because those times you would borrow books, borrow tapes. The moment you looked at a young man, the first thing you were looking at was his hands, not his watch. What book are you carrying? Wow. Who wrote this one? You will collect it immediately and plead for three days because it's not your own. So you don't have the luxury of keeping it and waking up. You finish that very quickly. 
and submit it. Can I tell you, if you turn aside in the day of battle, it's because your strength is small. For someone, this is a prophetic word for you. You are in a season of preparation. Please build capacity. When you build capacity, you don't build capacity on stage. You take out time. That is the time to hide yourself behind the veil. That is the time to pray when others are sleeping. That is the time to fast. You will not die. Capacity. That is the time to learn scripture. Discipline yourself. Hold on to the horns of the altar. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of learning. Any useful information that can help you. You find a book on leadership. That's your opportunity to read it. Why? Because someday God is going to be trusting you with a global ministry. And it will take more than anointing to run that ministry. You need to understand what it takes. Oh, I don't know so much about relationships. You find a book on relationships. How to keep people, how to have great friends and great associations. You now read it. You are building capacity. Look up please. Jesus spent 33 and a half years on earth. You can break that, those 33 and a half years into four compartments. There's no time to teach it this night. But do you know that a major part of Jesus' life was not spent doing ministry. It was spent preparing for ministry. From age 12, he was already in the temple. And till age 30, when he came to be baptized and ordained by John, and he used three and a half years. Look at the ratio of preparation to manifestation. 12, 30 minus 12 is 18 years at least. 18 solid years of preparation. How about the apostles? From the time he called them as disciples, he kept mentoring and building them, not impartation. Look at the ratio of teaching to impartation. Three years to one night. Impartation will not profit you much if your mind is not full of useful information. It is the level of your transformation and the quality of information you have that gives the power upon you credence. There is a way you can be, help them please, there is a way that you can be anointed. You will look like you are a fake prophet even though you are genuine. Why? Because the level of intellectual soundness, spiritual soundness that will help you maneuver the anointing in a scriptural way is not there. There are many genuine people who look like devils, not because they are bad, but because they did not take out time to invest in knowledge. There is no problem with the oil. The problem is the pot. The oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make great oil look small. It's time to borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Listen, for some of you, after tonight, just pause a bit with all these buying shoes and hair and all of that. Go to a bookstore and say, for God's sake, may I be fair to my destiny and my children and my children's children. You buy the truth and you sell it not. You can't have a room full of clothes and shoes and you have one small Gideon's International Bible that was given you as a gift. That only has a New Testament. They gave those things to encourage sinners to come to the saving knowledge of God. You that wants to now lead a church, who will sit down with you when they are all better than you? Let's be very honest. There is a level of leadership that is leadership by results. find somewhere to stop season of preparation can I tell you run away from anybody who does not have a history of this season of preparation I don't care how great I don't care how mighty if you cannot find a track record of a season of preparation something is faulty with that pattern you don't have to fight you don't have to condemn you don't have to cause trouble but I can tell you the moment your structure is not built on this pattern, something will eventually happen. That which I tell you in the secret place, that is what you will declare upon the mountaintop. Are we together? You discover God and you know him. You discover yourself. 
you discover your giftings and your abilities you discover your place in life and destiny then you now begin to build capacity refining your gifts now is the time if you need to go for training go whether spiritual or secular stretch yourself to the limit so that you are not a workman that needs to stand in shame angry with people and there are many people who miss these seasons they were laughing at those who were preparing it took over 100 years to build the ark that saved the people for over 40 it was for 40 40 days huh? thereabout rain that was coming for 40 days caused a lifetime disaster and yet it took over 100 years to build that ark everybody say preparation can I tell you, Lamentation chapter 3, I think, verse 27 or so, it says, it is good for a man to bear his yoke in his youth. Destiny is time targeted. Every time is not convenient. If you know how to play football at 80, you will play in your house alone. No matter how professional, even if it is true that you are greater than the greatest footballer, you just don't have that advantage. So then teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart on to wisdom let me introduce the second season and then we'll wrap up for tonight we'll take the third together with the impartation probably tomorrow the second season in your life are you ready for it is called the season of testing or proving i told you there are three seasons in your faith adventure number one the season of preparation I listed for you the five things that must be captured in this season so that if you know you are in your season of preparation right now you go back and do this as a checklist what am I missing ah I love God but I've not discovered myself I need to do it fast and in a strange way God seems to program the growth process of many to match the duration of their stay on campus so that if you start seeking God well by the time you are leaving, you will not live in shame because there are certain atmospheres and opportunities you may not easily find again. For instance, brethren praying all the time, even when you are going down spiritually, you are strolling around somewhere and you see people praying, the Holy Ghost will use their prayer to say, but this is not our agreement. 100 level, this was what happened in 300 level. You can quickly repent and get back. But you will get to a place, a, a world out there where even in your backsliding state, you are the most spiritual person. Please write this, the season of preparation. We have to wrap up. 1 Samuel 17 from verse 33 to 37. And then we are going to pray. Has God spoken to someone tonight? 1 Samuel 17, 33 we we'll read to 37 and then that does it for tonight now watch this again Saul and David and Saul said to David thou art not able to go against these Philistines to fight with him for thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth Do you know what he's saying He's saying this man has prepared for battle. He is not strange. You are a young man who is just starting. David is about to correct Saul. Next verse. We are reading 37. And David said unto Saul, listen carefully. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. 35. And I went out after him and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by the bird and smote him and slew him two more verses and thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised philistine shall be as one of them let me explain to you what this means when he was killing the lion he did not know that that was just a trial a preparation because there is a real Goliath you would kill. When he killed the lion, nobody clapped. When he killed the bear, nobody knew. But when he killed Goliath, all Israel clapped. 
your season of testing and preparation is where God will stretch you and test the purity of your heart you will be doing great God will give you assignments to do mighty things in the spirit and yet there will not seem to be any reward system God can give you an assignment to pray for a man of God you do not know for one month fasting for him and yet you are not permitted to discuss it with anybody so how do they know I am spiritual God said it is between me and you that is a season of testing where you can go for a program and God will use you mightily healings and miracles and the next time you will hear in church that they are looking for an usher and God will say you that is your position and you say God I thought we were about to start ministry he says you go and be that usher can I tell you every time your spiritual experience starts humiliating you you have entered a season of testing the assignment of testing is to purify your motive please listen this is a very prophetic teaching go and get this teaching and sit down with it as a retreat follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise seasons let me tell you this there was a time in my life where I prayed and fasted I was going for a program it started raining and I made up my mind the people were hungry and ready to receive it was not too far from where I was living and I stood there in the rain I would refuse that program or go you know it was all within my power but I made up my mind that I was not just going to let things go like that I remember going out in that rain with my Bible as the rain was pouring on me I was going I said Lord I love you with all my heart I'm not doing this because I'm looking for a name I sincerely want to see your people blessed nobody knew Joshua Selman nobody was going to give me anything do you know when I got to the church there was no seat for me they were already jumping preparing to act drama it was when they told them I had come that they quickly shifted me in and then they now shifted a few people in front and said I should sit here and then after drama of over 45 minutes they sang they jumped they enjoyed when it was time to come up they just pass a little paper and say please I have 15 minutes I should just manage it and round up you can be angry and say do you know how many days I fasted for this meeting seasons of testing beware of offense when the anointing starts speaking sometimes God allows certain things to happen to prune you you may think you are going to be the president of the fellowship suddenly they will say you are the chief protocol and you say what kind of thing is this I was already traveling and going to preach in youth meetings and preach in vigils and when they were looking for a music director that time in FCS the people were even afraid they said no 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 how, how are we going to tell this guy to be music director this is somebody who is teaching us and I remember when they called and said they are looking for a music director the Holy Spirit told me you will be the music director I told them I said with all joy if it's to serve my king I will serve him the guy who was going to be the music director for the band because the choir the main choir was different from the band he refused to accept the position because I was the one teaching him it's like a father and a son now because of the fellowship now has a position I told him I said serve with honor when we are outside of that circle you can do all of this but within this time you must serve God and God sees my heart I serve with all my heart are you learning now when you are too big to be tested and proven then you are too small to be to be a great vessel that God will use many people have aborted many people did well in the season of preparation but when they got to the season of testing offense and pride and anger they said is it that this man Abba, I mean this fellowship this guy that is preaching we are all seeing that he's preaching nonsense and I'm here seated what is the meaning of this and God says sit down and make sure you come to church early and you sit quietly there then when they want to use an example they will now use you as an example they will bring somebody else who just got born again one year and now come to act drama and maybe a comedian or somebody who is joking he will now call you out and use you up for an example and you'll be like my God let me tell you this when you read Deuteronomy chapter 18 
from verse 13 down Deuteronomy 8 from 13 to 18 the Lord began to admonish them to tell them why they passed through everything they passed through he said to prove them so that in the end he will bless them we are going to wrap up with this tomorrow will take the last season please do not miss the morning session because we may not have time for any prayers and impartation tonight but we'll use that opportunity tomorrow even though I will still speak over your life my time is up listen very carefully ask Pastor Dele Dr. Dan every other man of God who God is using here whether here or in the congregation they will nod their head to everything I've said because there is a parallel of such seasons in their lives you can know ah, even if you do not call it by the names I have given you will know that this is what God was achieving can I tell you some of you you are in this very season right now the season of preparation Satan wants to distract you God is shutting you away from many distractions and you are feeling antisocial and even feeling insulted can I tell you do not regret it you never fail with God you can fail alone but you and God cannot fail together I believe that the next Pastor Delis, the next great men and women Reinhard Bonkes, T.L. Osborne's are scattered within this place but claiming a man's status in the spirit without submitting to the precepts that brought the person there is only flattering yourself he said if you are children of Abraham you will do the works of Abraham hallelujah my call for you tonight therefore is to know that 25 years is not just the passage of time 25 years is a capture of history to preserve for the generations to come that when they say what did you do with God that made him to covenant with himself that you will last let me tell you the truth one of the blessings of working with God is longevity of whatever you represent go and read your Bible those who work with God what they stand for never dies even if you are Abel though dead you will yet be speaking one of the signature blessings that come upon a man who truly works with God is that God immortalizes the impact of that man so that even when you are long gone today Reinhard Bonke is long gone today T.L. Osborne is long gone today Billy Graham is gone today all these great men have gone Miles Munro all of them gone but they are still alive alive in us alive in books and alive in time we can choose any one of them whether you find us find books or look through time you will still find your works with God as a roadmap for you to find a great destiny we're going to spend two minutes if I spend two minutes with us praying will that be fine in the next two minutes please don't be distracted no moving up and down just find a corner and you are going to pray hold on to the horns of the altar and cry to the God of heaven father I will not abort destiny I obtain grace to maximize this season of preparation someone is praying Shadaparakata Grace to seek you. Grace to press. Grace to press. Grace to press. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and setting for the things that are before me, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ, looking up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame one more minute someone is praying I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and greatness I said before you the next 25 years of an impactful life or the next 25 years full of regret and pain and shame hallelujah one last prayer point lord take away destiny stealers take away distraction listen it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us lord cut away distraction from my life someone go ahead and pray excessive use of social media that is not for the profiting of your spirit that may be your issue for some of you relationships and friends that are not adding up to your spiritual progress for some of you ungodly media content and consumptions that eat up the health of your spirit man for some of you prayerlessness for some of you wordlessness no prayer no fasting for some of you pride and vain glory I am a pastor I am an apostle I am a prophet I am this and that for some of you dishonor dishonor to your superiors spiritually dishonor to fathers dishonor to principles in the name of Jesus please can I give you let me give you an assignment tonight I want you at the request of your pastor is a personal assignment at least between this night and tomorrow morning, please spend, choose any one hour, whether it's from 11 to 12, 12 to 1, choose any one hour and spend time alone doing three things. Number one, praying in the spirit. Don't make any prayer request. Don't forget about tea and bread. Leave all that one. You are praying in the spirit. Get an atmosphere of worship. You can go online and download anything or find someone, get a tape playing something and pray in the spirit. Write out all these things, the tools for your destiny. Some of you notebooks that the Holy Ghost revealed things for you. Go and look for them this night. All those old notebooks you have forgotten, gather them tonight. Some of you may need to repent before God personally and say, Lord, my life is not the way it is. I can't keep lying and pretending. I don't care whether you're a president, whether you're a pastor. That's not what I'm asking you. Stay with God and flog it with destiny this night so that by the time you are returning tomorrow, you are returning as an enlarged vessel ready to receive. Are we okay on that? May the Lord bless you and reveal himself to you. Over this campus and over this city, we release angelic encounters tonight. For some of Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist 
by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you